Hey YouTube, um, last year I promised a video on how to build a guitar speaker cab and I never got around to putting the video together but now I've built another guitar speaker cab so I documented it pretty well with some video and pictures and I thought it would be a good time to put it up for those of you who want to see the process and maybe build one on your own. Um, I built mine with my grandfather who's a really intelligent uh, engineer and carpenter uh, but it really doesn't take being a genius to build a guitar speaker cab. The first thing I did was make a plan. I can't really give strong advice here because your plan will depend on your speaker configuration and a number of other factors, but you can look at the dimensions of cabs made by companies like Avatar and Lopaline. You might want to find a cab similar to the one that you want to build and use their external measurements. The cab that I built is a 4x10, based roughly on the measurements of the Tweed Bassman and Super Reverb, to pair with my Silverface Fender Bassman. About a year ago, I built a 1x12 that I use with my Vox Pathfinder, as well as with the Bassman and other amps that come through the studio. The first cab you build is the hardest. They're actually pretty simple to build, it just takes some careful measuring and having a plan. I drew out plans for the pieces of the cab. There's a top, bottom, two sides, a back, and a baffle, which is where the speakers attach. You also need some strips of wood for the baffle and back of the cab to sit up against and be screwed into. I used some scrap wood for this. I like to have the sides of the final cab sandwiched between the top and the bottom pieces, so when weight is put on top of the cab, it's holding it together even better. My baffle and the back are the same size, fitting perfectly into the box formed by the top, bottom, and sides. After I had my plans, I went to a lumber yard to buy some wood. I'm fortunate enough to have a lumber yard near my house that deals with a lot of kitchen cabinet makers, so they have a decent supply of high quality wood. You can get wood from places like Home Depot or Lowe's, though you might pay more and have to search harder for a piece of wood that's without warps and bad knots. For both cabs I built, I used 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. I'm a big fan of birch for its acoustic properties and the fact that it's strong without splintering too much. I used half-inch pine ply for my baffle, not really for any specific reason, it was what was available and sounded good in my last cab. I had the lumber yard cut my pieces oversized to cut down later, since they don't always cut perfect right angles or exactly to the right length on their large panel saws. The first thing we did was cut the baffle down to size. We then figured out the placement for the speakers and marked the position of the holes for them. My speakers are 10 inches, so the holes for them are actually 9 inches. I cut the holes very poorly with a jigsaw and sanded them down a little better. Mine are far from perfect, but they're fine. Next we marked the position for the holes in the speaker frame. These holes would be where the bolts attach the speaker to the baffle. We drilled holes through the baffle so the bolts could attach the speaker into T-nuts. Next we cut the sides, top, and bottom to size. They need to be very exact, especially the sides, since the top will sit on top of the sides. If they're not cut exactly the same, the cabinet will not be square. We assembled the pieces together and used some right angles cut from wood to give us a surface that we could clamp to and help pull it square. Here you see it before the second clamp is attached, pulling the side on. We put a little wood glue on the edge, clamped it together, and added a few nails to each side to make sure it was secure. Here it is with the baffle placed inside it. The next thing we did was cut the strips for the baffle and back pieces to get screwed to. We used some scrap 3 quarter inch solid birch since plywood might not hold together as well with a screw through it in such a small piece. We placed the baffle inset from the edge a bit, put the strips up against it on either side, and then nailed the strips into the sides of the cab. The baffle will be attached to the strip after it's covered with the speakers attached. We did the same thing to the other side of the cab for the back to be attached to. The next step was cutting the back to the right side, which sets onto these strips. You can see here that my back is convertible, able to be used as an open back or closed back cab. The last step of the actual construction was rounding the edges of the cab with a router. We used a 3 8 inch bit. On the last cab I built, I did all this rounding by hand, which took me about two weeks. I would highly, highly suggest using a router to make your life so much easier. Now it was on to the tolexing. A lot of people absolutely hate this process, but I love it. The first thing to do was lightly sand all unrounded edges. 
I wrapped some 400 grit sandpaper around a block of wood and went around all the inside edges of the cab, as well as all the edges of the back pieces. If your edges are too sharp, they can wear through the Tolex over time. To figure out the pieces, I placed the cab in the middle of my large piece of Tolex, a few inches from one edge. You want enough excess to wrap around the edge of the wood and a bit into the cab. I pulled the piece all the way around the cab. Since the piece I used was left over from my last cab, it was slightly too short to reach all the way around. Not a problem. I kept the cab in place, top down, and laid the Tolex flat so it was one long strip. After tracing around the edge of the cab, on the Tolex, we rolled the cab over on its side, making sure to keep it the same distance from the edge of the Tolex. We then applied Tolex glue, which is a latex glue that's really great to work with, to the Tolex within the traced lines, and the cab. After letting the glue set for about a minute, we lifted up the glued part and smoothed it firmly onto the cab from one side to the other. We then turned the cab so the finished top was down and repeated the same process for the two remaining sides. This left two side flaps on the bottom that were not glued down and didn't reach each other. I took another piece of Tolex, which I'll call the bottom piece, that more than covered the gap between the two flaps. I cut the side flaps down a bit to be more manageable, then put down some glue in the middle of the bottom of the cab, between the side flaps, and also to the bottom piece of Tolex. We then applied glue to the wood under one side flap and to the bottom piece of Tolex. Then I smoothed the bottom piece into place and smoothed the side flap down to overlap it. I then took a metal ruler and scored through both the bottom piece and side flap about two and a half inches in from the edge of the cab. The excess from the side flap is now cut off. Just lift up the side flap and peel up the edge of the bottom piece under it, which has now been cut. Then smooth the side flap down into the glue and it'll match up perfectly with the new edge of the bottom piece. I lit this so you could see the seam pretty well, but in person it's completely unnoticeable if not invisible. So at this point I had a cab that had Tolex on the top, bottom, and sides. Next came cutting the Tolex for the corners. Since the corners of the cab are rounded, wrapping the Tolex properly takes a little planning. In short, you cut the Tolex to this shape. The squared pieces will wrap around the edge to the inside of the cab, and the 45 degree diagonal cut in the corners will allow it to cover properly. I cut the excess off the pieces that will get wrapped around so the Tolex wouldn't reach to the strips on the inside. Then we just applied glue to these pieces and smoothed them firmly to the inside of the cab. The bottom of the cab, that had the second piece of Tolex filling the gap, will need the same treatment on the sides that it got on the top, overlapping, cutting with a straight edge, then removing the strip and pressing the flap into it. Here's my cab so far. You can see my rough cuts on some parts, but they'll be hidden by the baffle. The back pieces of my cab were pretty self-explanatory. Placed the board flat on some Tolex, cut off the excess, cut normal corners, applied glue, smoothed on the pieces. The other two pieces of the back get covered the same way, though the top has a hole in it for the speaker jack, which gets cut in the Tolex as well. The cab itself was now done for the most part. Screw on the corners and there we go. The one last part is the baffle. I recessed the T-nuts that the speakers will be screwed to into the wood a bit so they wouldn't make bumps in the grill cloth later, and used a cheap black spray paint to paint it black. Here it is resting in the cab. Assembly was pretty simple. I attached the speakers to the baffle, wired them up, then screwed the baffle into the cab, followed by the back pieces. The very last step was soldering the speakers to the jack. You can find all the info you need about how to wire speakers easily with a quick search. Here you can see the finished cab with my silver face basement sitting on top. You can see it matches pretty well with the aged looking fender style grill cloth and nickel corners as opposed to chrome. I'll make sure to do some demos so you can hear the cab with different amps and guitars. <laughs>